All right, so we're chatting about C groups. Um, so, um, uh, so there were there were a few. Uh, so we want to review what the. Uh, so we wanted to review what the the known prerequisites are before we can go to production and mm -hmm. um, touch bases on uh, how we're both feeling about the the go to production uh, approach. Um, why don't, why don't we start with the overall? How do you feel about the approach? Um, yeah. So to 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 make sure I understand the approach. So basically, what the plan is to do is instead of rolling it on Canary and then on a shard basis, we're gonna configure the C groups. So Kitty just creates all the C groups, and then we're gonna use the feature of like as a percentage rollout. For example, one percent, ten percent throughout yes. the whole fleet. Right. Mm -hmm. um, at there are some was, alternatives, but I, but yeah, I, I felt like that was probably the safest one. So yeah, go go ahead and talk about what yeah. uh, what, what your feelings are. Yeah, at first I was a little bit against it simply because I feel like both Canary, for example, HDD and Marquee are gonna have different car workloads, so they might have different uh, C groups limitations that we might want to put in yes. place. Uh and let me address that right now. I am totally planning on uh, on having, so I, I don't need to have it in production to do the initial calibration. And I'm expecting Canary to have different thresholds, uh, to, to have different sizing sizing limits um, because of its, uh, and, and I'm planning on doing the same analysis for, for all of them, um, for, for all of those categories that we talked about before. So, yeah. um, and that'll be baked into the, the Chef MR. So this, so the feature flag would become an on-off switch, but the the uh, HDD and the marquee and the 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 um, the main fleet in Canary um, would all uh, potentially have different thresholds depending on uh, depending on how the data okay. turns out. Okay, so the Chef merge requests will have different configurations. Yes. Per... Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, um, Assuming that the data, uh, that the, the the usage, the historical usage trend uh, suggests that. Um, so uh, that that was one piece I thought maybe wasn't clear that I wanted to um, just highlight yeah. that. Okay, I'm glad uh, I'm glad we're in agreement there. And yeah. um, uh, I I guess that makes sense. Uh, do it all in one go because then we get get more data and um, um, we we don't mess around with uh, enabling it on one feed. Yes. And then enabling the picture flag and so on and so forth. So yeah, yeah. I, I was really surprised that the um you know the 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 feature flag support in Giddly um it's it's just not there. It doesn't it doesn't no. uh, it doesn't support actors. Um I wanted I was doing some some uh some just sanity checking and um um it uh, I, I realized that it doesn't work any anything close to the same way in in uh, yeah. Giddly as it does in 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 Rails right. and the documentation's really you know very biased towards how feature flags are implemented in Rails. So I was like, all right, well, let me just go check the code and see. It. And I was like, where is the actor support? It's not yeah. here. Um, so anyway, yeah. After uh, I convinced myself I wasn't being an idiot, I went and asked the Giddly team, and they're like, nope, it's just not implemented yet. And uh, yes, uh, it really is silently ignored. Yeah, exactly. At least we have percentage, so that the uh, I'll, I'll consider that as a win, right? Yes. Now, but yeah. Same here. Okay. Same here. Um, and it it does uh, it does uh, at least as I'm thinking of it, um, it does still give us uh, a rapid way to turn it off. And I was uh, I think I was chatting with Rachel a few days ago, um, um, if memory serves, about the the consequences of turning it back off. So if if we're in a pinch, and I wanted to talk through this with you as well, just to so Sandy, you check me on this. Um, so if we've if we've enabled so pretend that we've enabled C groups, um, it's been enabled for. I'm just going to make some stuff up. It's been enabled for an hour, and we start to get some out of memory uh, errors on one machine, say file seventy five. Yeah. Um, rather than try to you know isolate the problem on that machine, I think we just cut the feature flag off uh, globally, and I think the effect of that is uh, because. The, because Diddly's implementation is effectively to to um, not call the add command method for uh, to the uh, on the secret manager. Um, if that feature flag is off, that really the the time horizon for the feature flag taking effect is probably measured in seconds, however long it takes for Diddly to kind of you know refresh its cache for the state of the feature flag. Yeah. Uh, so so as far yeah, that, that's exactly my understanding. And as far yeah. as I know, it's Rails that sends the feature flag. So uh, there's like the usual 
Um, oh, as part of the gRPC argument? Yeah, as far as I know. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. So, okay. so that's why it's, it's part of the context then. Okay. Exactly. That's why it's part of the context post because it's part mm -hmm. of the request. So okay. it can take up to like 300 seconds because of feature, some feature flags are cached and things like that. Right, but right. as soon as it's turned on, it's kind of like, yeah, yeah. old Git commands will stay in the C groups, but those are short-lived Git commands. Like it yes. can be depending on the Git clone and things like mm -hmm. that, but all new Git commands will not be part of C groups. So exactly. Um, exactly. I, I, I think that makes sense to mm -hmm. have a and rip the... or use the feature flag as a rip cord rather than yeah, exactly. disabling yeah. it, uh, disabling it in chef. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, with, res with regard to the file system cache pages, they will remain charged to the C groups, but, uh, but because, um, because of the nature of, of the cache being kind of a shared entity, um, um, host level pressure will still, you know, be perfectly free to evict those pages. So it's not like mm -hmm. those pages are, are pinned in memory. Um, yeah. So even, even that aspect of it, you know, while a little bit harder to reason about, um, doesn't require any kind of tuning to, to make it work kind of the way you expect. So if there's, if there's, uh, so just to kind of play out an example, if we, uh, if after we've turned back off the feature flag, um, say there's a really greedy uh, process that wants to allocate, uh, you know, 20 gigabytes of anonymous memory, and now it's running it in the, the old system D managed uh, C group, mm -hmm. that, you know, along with Giddily, um, and, uh, the, and that, uh, at that point, kernel is going to say, well, I don't have 20 gigs of, you know, free memory lying around. I've got to evict them kind of cache. Yeah, yeah. It'll still be able to free up memory by kicking out pages from the, that were, uh, charged to the C groups, just, just in the same way that today it does, uh, for, for the, the old, um, 90 gigabyte C group. So that got behavior it, doesn't change. It's, it remains, uh, that, yeah, that, that remains perfectly viable. And that was the only other gotcha I want, I needed to kind of, you know, talk through to kind of reason my way into yes this would be okay too got it yeah um i, I think that makes sense and i agree with that um okay. I, I i kind of feel like oh we should have gone uh, with our original approach just enable it on canary and go 100 percent feature flag wise but i do feel like having a ripcord with feature flags is a lot safer mm -hmm. in yeah. that sense so I agree okay. with the throw it out. Um, yeah. One thing that maybe we can discuss is the time interval between each bump. So yeah, I don't want to do it all in one day. I mean, uh, exactly. I mean, I okay, yeah. uh, I'm glad we agree on that because I, yeah. I, I wasn't too happy. Initially, with one percent, yeah. one percent, and two percent makes sense to do it in one day. But yeah, maybe ten percent yeah, yeah. to fifty percent, we can leave either a day or a half, at least twenty-four hours on the clock to have like all the workloads and all people come online and yeah, yeah. the repositories and things like that. I think that's perfectly fine. Um, so uh, th there were kind of two aspects of that I wanted to chat about just briefly. Um, um, so starting with 1% is really just kind of, you know, almost Sorry, a to check. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I don't, I don't expect to leave it in the one percent state for very long, uh, and then we move it up to kind of you know a more sub substantial percentage where we actually get to see some action. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, two two things. Uh, one is expectations, and uh, for for what the what the uh, uh, what what the results are, are likely to look like, and two was. Um, I was a little bit tempted to split it into separate change requests, but there's there's so much paperwork. I figured I'd just pile it onto one change request. Yeah, um, yeah, we can always move it to in progress and then back to. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah, how do, yeah, yeah, that sounds fine. I, I've done that before. No one yelled at yeah. me before. So okay, I think. <laughs> okay, I think that sounds works. good. Plus, we've got all the context there. Yeah, that's yeah. that's great. That sounds great. Um, okay, so um, right, so what to expect? Um, so having a percentage of the time rollout, um, we'd expect to have um, um, the growth of the memory usage of the C groups will be slower, proportional to what percentage we've set. Um, the I think the distribution of um, um, I'm thinking about this in terms of uh, I mean th there's a few ways to kind of you know categorize how memory is being used. But in terms of like, uh, I'm thinking of it in broad strokes in terms of file backed pages versus anonymous pages. I would expect, uh, I would expect that. So what's a file back, like uh, maybe it oh, does- A file system cache much. page. Oh, okay, yeah. got it. 
yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, it's really like anonymized pages are like when process, you know, malics a page, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's, it's kind of historical nomenclature. So there's file backed pages, which are, as the name suggests, backed by, you know, it's, it's a block from a file that's loaded into the, into the page cache, which mm -hmm. we now call file stream cache. Uh, and then anon anonymous pages is everything else, everything that's not file backed. Um, uh, but yeah, um, so the file backed pages are, uh, and this this can be uh, this can be something where like if if your program does a read syscall that'll load the that'll you know read the file in you know into the file system cache and then uh, if it wasn't yep. already there from disk and then uh, the 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 program is just accessing pages in the file system cache. Very similarly, if uh, if a file uh, if sorry if if a program maps uh, a file. Mm -hmm. um then that's if effectively saying um um within the context of the process this virtual address space whenever i access this uh, you know this virtual address it's going to correspond to this page of the file and this virtual this virtual address corresponds to that page in the file and kernel is free to um kick out just like just like normal uh, file back pages the the um, kernel is free to kick those out of the file system cache whenever it wants it's just mm -hmm. that whenever the process goes to access that virtual memory there'll be a, a address that that corresponds to a, a page in the file um, kernel will get that'll trigger a page fault uh, in in kind of the normal control flow kernel will load that page back in from disk if it wasn't already there and then uh, let the application resume just as though nothing had happened so it works it's these are just kind of different facets of how the how the kernel will uh will effectively manage the file system cache um, okay. yeah so uh with risk with regard to c groups um i i think you know this but i just want to recap because it's because it's uh it's relevant to this part of the, the the chat um any any page in the page cache whether it's anonymous or or file back but mostly we're talking about the file system cache here any page is going to be charged to at most one c group Yep. Um, if we're not using C groups at all, then the root C group slash will uh, accrue them all. Um, today, uh, right now in production, um, uh, as as you know uh, very well, we've got the system D managed C group. It's sized at 90, 90 gigabytes. Um, all of the file system cache, you know, uh, almost all of the pages in the file system cache get charged to that C group, and that's uh, actually the the fact that that C group is noticeably smaller than the host level uh, uh, memory um, capacity. Uh, I think it's 90 gigs versus like 120, 110. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 128, I think. Yeah, so this is this is actually why uh, that host is in kind of an unusual, those hosts are, tend to be in the unusual state of having a relatively large number of gigabytes of free memory because almost everything that we're doing that touches that large file system is running inside that C group that's got a 90 gigabyte limit and yeah. the file system cache, you know, any, any pages, you know, any, any files that they access get uh, charged to that C group because nobody else is actually accessing those pages. And we can blow that up. For example, if we run, I don't know, like if, if we cat one of these, you know, large files outside of that C group, then that'll go in, you know, into the root C groups. Yeah. Anyway, I think you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, we, so, we have enough headroom to run other commands out, out outside. Of yeah. HP that yes. can eat up a lot of memory. Yes. So, um, so once we, uh, so here's, so circling back to what things will look like once we enable these C groups. Um, so each of the, uh, let's just say 1000 for now, each of the 1000 per repo C groups is uh, going to independently accumulate uh, pages in the file system cache pages. Um, that's gonna happen unnaturally slowly um, for probably the next few weeks um, because most of the, on, on many of these Giddly hosts, most of the file system cache pages are already charged to a different C group, the original C group. And so, our, our Git commands that are now going to be running inside their own per repo C groups would they have to otherwise be charged. First. Yeah, exactly. So they kind of mm -hmm. get a free ride in terms of the file system cache because it's already been warmed by somebody else, by the other C group, yeah. um, and they won't be charged for, for anything there. Um, so here's here's kind of an interesting uh, interesting pattern that I don't know how obvious it's gonna it's gonna be uh, in the future. So I, and and it's kind of hard to write write down. So I wanted to just talk through it. Um, 
so uh, you've already got all of the pieces so that this will be quick um, with anybody else that would take longer. Um, <laughs> so uh, you know these pervy boosy groups are going to be short lived. Um, yes. you know, on the on the order of, I don't know, like hours to days because we do deploys very often. Um, anytime, uh, so anytime we uh, we do a, a Giddly restart and the old Giddly processes uh, per repo C groups get destroyed, their, uh, whatever whatever file system cache pages had been charged to those C groups, when, that, when those per repo, old per repo C groups get uh, deleted, their They're parents, Exactly, they bubble up. So their parents, the you know, Giddly slash Giddly one two three four is going to inherit them, and then when that C, when that parent C group gets deleted, it'll be inherited by the system. Slash, D. It'll it, no, it'll no, go to the slash no, Giddly C group. Yes, yes, which is right. also long lived. Um, and so what we'll see over time is that C group is going to kind of be the new kind of you know. Um, uh, dumping ground for file system cache pages. And uh, I think that the per repo C groups, only because they're very short lived, will still kind of get a free ride most of the time <laughs> in the same way that they're, they're going to get a free ride for now because the old system DC but, group is. But from your, like, what do you mean by a free ride? Like from a metrics point of view, right? Not from, Yes, uh, this is purely from a metrics point of view. So, uh, got it. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, would you say yeah. we need to monitor the slash Kitty uh um, c group because right now we're not yeah we're not um i don't know that's a good question um i mean generally we don't really pay a lot of attention to monitoring the Faustin cache state and that's really kind of what it's mostly going to be about mm -hmm. just being kind okay. of the, the dumping ground for the Faustin cache but 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 basically we need to keep an we, we need to be aware that mm -hmm. the metrics can lie Ooh. to us yeah, exactly. And you know what else? I just realized this. Um, so today, the the system D managed C group. Uh, so when I say the system D managed C group, but I mean uh, the one that's named at GitLab run as run, vendor, dot yeah. service. Yeah, it's it's yeah. got a it's got a, an unwieldy long name, but that's the one I'm talking <laughs> about. Just just to be yes. clear. Um, um, so right now, that C group has a 90 gigabyte limit. Mm -hmm. um, our slash Gitly C group has no limit. So that's actually going to make the Faust of Cache be able to use basically whatever, like it would act like a normal host does. <laughs> yeah. And be able to use, you know, as much of the memory as it wants to as, as, uh, as Faust of Cache. I kind of like that as a side effect. Um, mm. I mean, that wasn't in anyone's mind as we were kind of planning the, the hierarchy. Actually, I kind of thought it was a little bit silly to have a slash Giddly layer of the hierarchy that we didn't, you know, I mean, silly in the sense that it does no harm and it does like, it's kind of helpful for namespacing purposes, yeah. um, but we don't technically need it. Um, so it doesn't serve a, a purpose in, in, in that sense because- Yeah, uh, and creating a C group is essentially free if we're not uh, using it. Uh, and that yeah, sense, right? yeah so, exactly, yeah. exactly. But now that, I, now that I'm thinking about custom caching behavior, it kind of has this nice side effect because we're not putting any limits on that C group. Um, Eh. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'm I'm just uh, so I'll, I'll stop blathering about that. So that no, the main no, thing, <laughs> main thing I wanted to kind of talk through was what to expect in terms of uh, memory usage that gets charged to the C groups because they're um, they're gonna get most of the file system cache has already been warmed um, by and, and th those those pages will remain available, but they're charged to different C groups. So what mm -hmm. we'll see in terms of the file system cache um, being charged to the new C groups is really just the stuff that's not already being warmed. That, that'll take some time to accrue, I'm, I'm guessing. Um, um, yeah, yeah, so that's that's really it. I think, uh, um, so So uh, I guess in terms of what we'll see during the first you know, hours or days of the rollout, I think the growth of the, the uh, memory dot usage in bytes uh, uh, um, uh, metric is gonna be, slower than what we would see if the fast and cache wasn't already warmed for them. Um, yep. and, that, and that's perfectly okay. It was just uh, it, because that growth is going to be slower, I wanted to call it out as something to expect. Yeah, that makes sense. I wasn't aware of that, so thank you for the mm -hmm. call out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what do you think, for example, on day one, let's say tomorrow yeah. or Monday morning, uh, yeah. my time, for example, we roll out 1% and 10%? Yeah, uh, with like maybe an hour in sure. between to make sure everything works fine. Uh -huh, and then uh -huh. on Tuesday, um, around the same time after 24 hours, we go 50%. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. then we leave it for maybe two or three days uh, on and enable it 100% on Thursday. So we can actually get some time between deploys and things like that, make sure everything behaves correctly. Sure, uh, that, that sounds reasonable to me. Um, um, did we skip Monday? Is Monday so, no, no, Monday will be 1% and 10%. So today and tomorrow we can spend time prepping all the merge requests. Oh, and things I like gotcha. That. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Uh, uh, and I'll take a look at one of your pre prerequisites. We'll discuss those a bit oh later. Oh my gosh, it's Thursday already. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, I just looked so, at the calendar. Okay. Yeah. So that Monday will be one, one Monday will be one percent and ten percent. Yeah. Uh, Tuesday we can do fifty percent, and then maybe Thursday we can do a hundred percent if everything goes uh, okay. according to. So code. you you may know this already, but I'm going to be uh, out. Um, I think it's next week. I'm going to be mm. out, out of out of office. On, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I was kind of hoping to be around for some of this, but I guess. Um, Oh, uh, like it would be nice for you to be around, but if you're gonna, I don't think it's strictly uh, uh, necessary, though. I mean, it's yeah. Uh, uh, so we've sure. got all of the safety mechanisms are are available. It's you know it. We've I think we've made this really safe. So, <laughs> yeah. um, yeah, and uh, but I don't want to steal your thunder in the sense like your satisfaction. Yeah, of actually pushing the no, I I will be very satisfied to get this rolled out. It's. <laughs> Um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm planning on doing that. So, uh, while, while I've got you here, uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I did want to just show it since I've got it on screen and it's very yes. fresh. Um, so about, about 10 minutes before our call, I started doing the, uh, uh kind of picking back up the, the outlier analysis. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is the, this is, uh, so there were two things I wanted to do for, uh, for, um, kind of calibrating. So the, the CPU usage, I, I don't, I don't care about that for using CPU shares. It's, you know, that that's, uh, I figure we'll, we'll set a we'll set a generous uh, a generous number of shares for each C group. Uh, it implicitly supports burst behavior anyway, even if we set yeah, you know, it's, number it's, of shares. It's, it's only so. goes into consideration when there's uh, CPU constraint, yeah. right? So exactly, exactly. About, so about that's why I'm focusing that. just on the memory. Yeah, perfect. So for the memory, um, so this is uh, this is uh, last seven days. I'm going to screenshot this so you don't have to like memorize it or anything. But I just wanted to talk yeah. briefly. So I'm looking back at last seven days. Uh, for all uh, all Giddly nodes in production uh, that that have that that spawned a command through the mechanism that we're going to be mm -hmm. you know, using secrets on, um, so each of those commands uh, gets our use statistics uh, captured, and uh, I say each, almost all of them get our use statistics. I'm assuming that that this is a reasonably large. It's not a complete census, but it's close close enough for our purposes. Um, yeah. All I really want to do is make sure that we have uh, that there's no single command that's going to blow the budget. <laughs> mm -hmm. If there's any one command that's going to need more memory than than we're going to give to the per repo C groups, then we have to reevaluate. Um, yeah. But happily, uh, this is giving us the the number of commands witnessed and the the 50th, 95th, 99th percentile and the actual max. Is and, this in bytes or? Yes, it's in bytes. Okay. So. Um, so this is, uh, and I got it broken down by shard, but we can already see that like the, um, that this is, uh, I, I will double check that it's in bytes because RSS is often reported in kilobytes, but um, this has to be bytes because we don't, it's gotta be bytes, but I'll double check that it really is bytes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, it really depends on how Giddly converts that number. Uh, yeah, that was, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll check that. Um, so not a lot. Uh, the max yeah, so this is if this is in bytes, then it's 70, 79 uh, megabytes, and that seems exactly. implausibly small. Um, yeah, because this isn't just anonymous memory. This is this is this includes mapped memory. So maybe this maybe this isn't using kilobytes. It was on my list to check anyway, but now I'm really really yeah. interested to check it. Okay. So um, I guess I guess what I'm really kind of getting at is. Um, um, uh, uh, this is this is RSS as reported by the, the by the process, not not by the C group. So this includes uh, uh, mapped files, which you know, um, if if uh, if if this uh, if this process that used seventy nine gigabytes of resident memory, what uh, if it if it if it is seventy nine gigabytes, um, it that process um, 
almost certainly wasn't uh, wasn't using that much anonymous memory. Some of that would have been file backed, and so at that point, yeah. I'd want to I'd want to go look at you know that example command to see what what what, uh, what was doing uh, what was going on there. Um, so this is the main thing I wanted to get is what what are what are the outliers? And it looks like uh, it looks like we don't have any in the last seven days any uh, any worrying outliers except for possibly this you know above the 99th percentile in the in default uh, shard so i'll go, yeah, I'll go. And, and, and potentially we would have wanted that to be in, yes right yes uh, correct and uh, and if uh, i'm going to make some numbers up here if uh, if it really used say you know 10 gigabytes of anonymous memory and the rest of it was and and the and the remaining uh, 70 gigabytes was uh, was file backed memory um, living inside a c group that you know, had something less than than eighty gigs uh, budget would work perfectly fine because the because uh, the, the kernel would just evict the the file backed pages um, and and pull them back in as needed. Uh, it doesn't have to keep the entire thing resident. So, so that's uh, I, I think that's that's kind of what I what I wanted to talk through. Um, I'm going to go find out um, what specific uh, um, repo this one was on um, and. Okay. and look I'll probably like go back to the, the the logs and find anything that was over you know over uh, uh, if if assuming the units are kilobytes here anything that was over twenty uh, you know ten or twenty just to take a look at those uh, those uh, those commands and treat them as outliers and see if uh, see if there's any kind of pattern that we need to be aware of there but that's okay. that's what I'm planning on to do for the outlier analysis and this is what I wanted to kind of reserve you know but maybe half an hour of focus time for. Uh, uh, would it be possible for you to like link this, the just table and things like that in the production rollout like, issue thing? So yes. We keep uh, track. So especially absolutely. if you're going to so, be on PTO. Uh, yeah, for sure. So we, uh, so I looked at the epic and yeah. this looked like the issue. Uh, I knew we had an issue for it, so I, I went and looked for it. And I figured yeah. that was a good place to to put uh, right. put scratch notes and. Um, I'll, uh, I'll I'll add a summary note to the uh, to the the main the main epic. Perfect. Um, yep. Yeah. So that's kind of okay. that's that's uh, that, that's what's hot off the presses. I wanted to share. <laughs> yeah. So uh, speaking of the epic, um, yes. uh, since we're changing a little bit the strategy, I was yeah. thinking maybe of closing. Like, let me share my screen quickly. Yeah, um, yeah. There's some stuff we need to close too. You're right. Yeah, like closing and so, and a few things that are done too. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, the canary one, we can close this. Um, uh, we can probably close this or yeah. merge it into this. Kind yeah, of thing, that's, there's nothing in that one anyway. We could just close yeah. it. If that was an older uh, version. <laughs> yeah, and then have this one and the um, yeah the change management issue instead of the change management issue, right? Since we're doing mm -hmm. it as part of the change management. Sure, uh, yeah. And then, yeah, that's it. Uh, okay. One thing I wanted to talk to you about is the prerequisites that you talked to me about Slack. Um, yes, uh, right. So I was I started looking a little bit at this before um, okay. uh, our call. It is strange because C advisor is enabled on uh, the Canary node mm -hmm. and Prometheus is configured to scrape it. So I'm not sure. Oh, weird, uh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll take a look at it tomorrow morning, my time, if okay. we don't have time to look at it. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, just for context, I, I assumed that it wasn't getting scraped because when I when I looked, when I removed the stage filter on looking at some of, you know, one of the metrics, yeah. um, it included all of the, you know, all of the other shards, but not not the canary stage. It, yeah. The canary one wasn't listed. So I assumed that meant we weren't scraping it, but I didn't dig into it further. Uh, what I suspect is that... Uh, we are not including oh, it you. in the C advisor uh, oh. uh, inventory. The inventory. Oh, yeah. that totally and makes sense. We can double check that quite quickly right now if we want to. So it's the chief prod from the server. I feel bad keeping you up late. <laughs> oh, no worries. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Uh, ooh, this should include, may maybe it doesn't. Oh, okay. Include. This does not include Canary. Maybe. Canary. Um, yeah, maybe. Uh, uh, I'll take a look at it tomorrow and confirm that. Yeah. But, uh, okay. Okay. Awesome. Um, That'd be great. And then you also mentioned so, since you're going to do the analysis, will you also open up the chef merge request or do you want me to do I, it? I, I am, Even if you just do the analysis and you give me the numbers, yeah. I can do um, yeah. the groundwork. I don't mind that. 
Um, I'm, I'm hoping to have that ready for your review. Um, okay. Fingers crossed. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I see you approved. Also approved my merge request to remove the yes. link. I'll I roll that out tomorrow if you okay. unless you want to roll it out. This yeah, I, I was hoping that you would uh, not mind doing that. Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll do I, that tomorrow to make sure Prometheus doesn't blow up. Okay. Yeah. My um, pager has been really quiet so far today, and I'm hoping to keep that going. Yeah, but yeah, the, the previous days have been awful. So um. yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I saw the incident channel. It does. Oh happen. yeah, yeah. Um, and dashboards update. Um, is there any specific thing that uh, I can? Oh my gosh, this with, is uh, this is just like a collection. Like I've got. Uh, I'm sure I've still got this open in the window. Um, oh my gosh, I have so many of these. Okay. Because even if you just give me links to Thanos, I can try and figure it out and try and add dashboards to it. So you can just give me it's, a thumbs up. And... It's, yeah, it's not like a... Oops. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not sharing. Um, so this is... Uh, so yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's uh, mostly small things. So um, mm. um, yeah, like the uh, I wanted to split split the row. So we got one instead of just one C groups row. I wanted to have one for CPU and one for memory, um, um, mainly because I wanted to you know make the context clear and uh, 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 I wanted to add some more. So <laughs> so some more that panels. Um, I'm switching the the units to to seconds so that it's uh, to to match the other panels on the same dashboard. Um, that makes sense. Um, yeah, these are these are just the the way you set these up made it really really easy to modify. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, and I wanted to add, so I copied your existing uh, um kills per node into this this memory C groups row because that's uh, it'll be directly relevant for. Um, Fair enough. Um, I added it yeah. to the um, uh -huh. node performance one. Yes, and I, I left it there because it, 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 that was a rational place to have it as well, and I figured there's no harm in having the same panel in two places. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't make uh, it doesn't har uh, hurt anything any performance. So yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Awesome. Um, okay. And the other thing I wanted to add is um, is the I, I don't this will take very long, but I'm going to add um, to the to the memory C groups uh, section the um, the <sighs> drives me nuts that they need it this way. But the the C groups RSS measurement yeah. that's yes oh, okay. exactly, and I'm I'm probably going to call it uh, like you know uh, anonymous memory usage and parenthetically call C groups RSS because it will people will misinterpret it because at, like everyone has this preconceived notion of what rss means based on like yeah. you know the last 30 years and having c groups use the same word for something completely different is just oh anyway yeah. all right i'm gonna that's stop griping about it but that's <laughs> yeah it i had to convince myself that that was a reasonable metric to include and and at this point I, i'm i'm comfortable saying yes it, it looks like it is so okay awesome um and when are you on the to if you don't mind me <sighs> I think it's, I should know this. Um, stand by. <laughs> um, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Yes. Um, wait. That doesn't make sense. Um, I'm totally wrong about that. It is starting on September 26th. It's not next week. It's the week after next. So I'll totally be here for this. Okay. Nice. Sweet. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. Okay. So my sense of time is so bad. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be up with you from the 28th of September as well. So it's perfect timing. There. Oh yes. Okay. To close right, it in fantastic. October. Okay, yeah. and then um, then I do want to potentially write some run books as well for uh, yeah. the on call people, even just learning yeah. about C groups or looking at like the RSS things and things like that. Even showing them the dashboard would be useful. Um, yes. So I'll, I'll take that on as well. Um, okay. Uh, but yeah, I think we have a clear plan, right? Yeah, I think so too. Um... Yes, I think that was everything I wanted to chat about. And and uh, are, are you comfortable with this? 
Yes, I'm completely okay. comfortable with this. Um, so to reiterate, you'll open up the chef merge request. I'll look at yes. the canary scraping yes. issues. Um, you'll also push out the dashboard updates and yeah. I will um, fix the relabeling uh, issue that we have, like roll it out yes. tomorrow. And then on Monday uh, morning, my time, I can start with the 1% and 10% rollout and uh -huh. leave it for a day and then yeah. move on to 50% and then yeah. leave it for two days and move to 100% and hopefully nothing blows up. Sounds fantastic. All right, awesome. we have it. Awesome. Wonderful. And I'll update the Epic and uh, everything else okay. tomorrow morning, my time as well to okay. make it All more right. clear what's the plan. But yeah, sounds okay. awesome. <gasps> Fantastic. Thank you, Steve. It's loads of no loads problem. of fun. I'm very excited about this. Uh, Me too. Me too. Oh my gosh. We're almost there. We're almost there. <laughs> <laughs> awesome work, man. Uh, oh, right, thank you so right. much. Have a nice thank day you. and hopefully the pager is quiet. Oh, sweet. Thank you. <laughs> See you later.